Earlier this year, I got my hands on the MediQuest 3, which actually is my very first VR headset. And I've actually learned a lot, most of which I actually tell you guys about on the channel. But there are three particular things that I learned from the get-go, which I honestly do not think I could have survived very long without knowing, or rather they helped quite a bit. So here they are. In case you guys don't know, pass-through mode goes to, so you're looking through these cameras in case you're worried that you're going to bump into something in real life. It takes you out of your VR experience. It sort of just pauses it so you can go into pass-through mode. So let's go over the methods right now. Okay, so the first method and the method everyone is talking about the most, you will need to be in the VR universe. That my little avatar character. And then you're in the VR universe, right? You want to go over to pass through. You click the meta button on the controller here. You should be able to see it. It's that button right there that I'm showing you guys. Click it, and then this will appear, okay? And then you just literally just click on into pass through, and then bada bing, bada boom, you've entered pass through. Now that, this is the first method. Now the second method, however, is by far my favorite method, okay? The second method involves just double tapping. Yeah, double tapping on either side, I believe, right about here. Yeah, you just double tap. You, sometimes you guys do it kind of quickly, so keep that in mind. But yeah, you just double tap and then you can go from and to Pass through mode. So you double tap the first time. It takes you from pass through. And then, I mean, from normal to pass through, you double tap again back to your game or wherever you were in the VR world. And I can double check for you, but I believe it works on both sides. Yeah, it works on both sides. So you can just be double tapping and go from and to the, the top part here and the top part on this side. This is my favorite method, honestly, and it's a method that most people don't talk about, oddly enough. Hand tracking is actually very convenient for the times where you just want to you know, do a couple things. Maybe go on the headset for a few minutes and you don't want to get a controller or the controller charging or you forgot to buy batteries or something. Well, there are two ways to enable hand tracking. The first way, of course, would be just by default. It's enabled to an extent. If you double if you double tap the controller together, what will happen is it will enable hand tracking. But there is another way, and for this other way, we actually will have to go into settings, which we can get to by just clicking here and then clicking on settings. Hand tracking can be a little wonky at times especially if you're in a lower um, light room. So definitely keep that in mind. Once we are in settings, we will then want to go to movement tracking, okay? 
you in order to actually select something while hand tracking you pinch your index finger and your thumb together and then what you want to do is click on this second one make sure it's checked here automatically switch between controllers and headsets automatically switch to hands after putting your controller down on a stable surface to pick up to i mean to switch back pick up your controller if the setting is turned off you will need to switch manually you know by tapping the controller together two times like i mentioned and then if you want hand and body tracking you can turn that on as well other switch sensitivity let's see enable to access more shortcuts and then there you go that is all there is to the hand tracking as you can see it's not actually bad at all at tracking hands I mean now and then things make it a little bit buggy like I said depending on lighting and a couple situations entirely also if you're just turning it on to do quick little things that's perfectly fine but if you want to do like very precise things you might struggle a little bit with it okay yeah you might struggle a little bit if you want to do some precise stuff because it's not always going to work correctly like i said especially in low um lit areas because it the uh, cameras on the headset that's actually detecting stuff and whatnot the, the med as you can see you can actually click stuff while here to a degree but as you can see it's not detecting everything as it's supposed to and yeah just keep that in mind just something to know i'm going to show you guys how to simply turn on or off automatic updates for your meta quest 3. this might be important if you want to you know let the meta quest 3 update every time there's an update available or if you alternatively don't want to risk updating it whenever there's an update available. I'll explain why you would and why you wouldn't want to after I show you. But first, we're going to go to settings. I've entered settings recently, so that settings is here. But if it's not there for you, you can simply just find it here. Go down to settings. And then there you go with that. Alternatively, you can actually hit quick settings and go to settings that way. But once you're at settings, you will want to click on system. And once you're at system, you will want to go to software update. And then what you will want to do is make sure this is on. If you, it's on right now, by the way. If you want to make it so software updates install right when they're available, you can turn it on or you can turn it off. You can even turn this off if you want, but I like leaving both of them on. Reasons why you might want to actually turn this off is because of the fact that Say your headset's about to die, but there's an update that's automatically installing. You don't want it to die mid-update. Whereas the reason why you might want to keep this on is so you don't have to worry about 
having to upset up um you know date your headset every time there's an update you won't have to worry about checking for updates and whatnot or you can kind of meet in the middle meeting in the middle would be to turn software updates off but leave security and critical updates on so that's just that mm -hmm.